You know, something that's kind of interesting that all of us use pretty much all the time is screenshots. And while they are important, one of the things that I recently thought about or discovered was that, you know, screenshots are actually kind of boring and a little bit ugly. So I'm gonna show you a tool today that makes them super pretty or well-designed with just a few clicks. So recently I realized how much I take screenshots pretty much every day and throughout the course of that day. And it kind of got me thinking, you know what's kind of weird about screenshots, particularly as things like magazines and newspapers cease to exist? It's kind of like cutting an article out of a newspaper or a snippet out of a magazine. It's just a screenshot of a particular area or section of a web page of a tweet of a profile, of an article, something that we deem to be interesting or useful to other people. The only thing that's kind of interesting about screenshots though is that they're kind of boring and kind of ugly. Unless you want to go through the process of downloading Photoshop and then creating layers on top of each other and then picking a background image. Unless you go through all that trouble, you're gonna end up with a boring and or ugly screenshot. That is until I recently came across an app called X Napper, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name right, but either way, it is an amazing app and it enables you to take screenshots and make them look amazing in just a few clicks. So without any more boring details, let's just go ahead and jump in and I'll show you the app. Okay, so first thing we wanna do once we have it installed is we just wanna click on the icon for the app that shows up in our menu and we just wanna to go to preferences. This will also probably show up if you are, if you've just installed the app. So this will show up for the first time and you just wanna go through here real quick and make sure that you've configured it so that it works properly for you. So you can add some shortcuts if you want to. You can pick where it saves an image after you're done editing it, which I'm just gonna save this to the desktop. You can have this launch at login. We'll go ahead and do that. You can always hide this window at launch, which is what I do since you're probably only just gonna configure your settings once. Then you can compress to a JPEG image when saving the file. I'm just gonna skip that because I want it to be the highest resolution possible. And then there's a number of other options you can configure as well, but I'm not gonna bore you with all those details. Okay, but let's say that there's a tweet that I wanna highlight maybe on my website or in a video, perhaps even this video. What we'd wanna do is pop up into our menu and we want to select take screenshot. Then we would wait for the crosshairs to appear and we would select the, uh, the area that we would want to screenshot. Now you might be saying so far, well, Thomas, that's what all screenshotting software does. That's really boring until you see this app pop up and instantly hit us already created for us this beautiful image. It's got a nice background image. It's got nice rounded corners. It's even matched the background color. So you saw that I only cropped about this much area in, but this thing has automatically detected the background color of the tweet, matched it, ran rounded the corners and added a background image. So let's go ahead and pop through some of these settings if you want to kind of customize this even further to make it fit a consistent look or style. So you can add padding to this. So that is gonna be primarily the spacing in between here and here, so this background color. So if you want more spacing, you can add more spacing. If you want less spacing, you can add less spacing. Then there's an inset, so the spacing between what you cropped and the edge of this little box. So if you want that to be bigger, you can make it bigger. If you want it smaller, you can make it smaller. Then it's got this cool little balance button, which is just amazing, because if you actually take a screenshot that's off center, for whatever reason, you just check that box and it's gonna automatically crop it and center it in the middle of this area, which I can go ahead and show you an example of that working, but you'll get an idea just at taking a look at this in terms of how that actually appears and shows up nice and centered inside our black square. Then there's the border radius. So you get to pick how rounded those particular corners are. Make this inset a little bit less. Then the shadow, you can pick how dramatic that drop shadow shows up. Then you can go through here and you can customize the background. So you can pick all from a number of different presets that they've already selected or created for you. I tend to do sky, I like that one. But then I also have this custom 
option right here. So I can pick my own colors or create my own gradients or even select an image file that I've already created. So I've kind of got this brand identity that I use for a lot of my YouTube videos. It's pretty dark, so it's not really gonna show up too well on this particular screen. So I'm probably not gonna use it in this case. What I can also do is select none, which means that it's gonna have a completely transparent background, no image back there, so I can overlay this in my YouTube video, for example. So here's an example of that. As you can see, it's showing the tweet, and I've got a background behind the particular tweet that I'm showcasing so that I can use the same format and look and feel throughout all the tweets or screenshots or things I wanna showcase throughout the length of my video and have a consistent look throughout, and it just takes a couple of seconds to create. But for the sake of this example, let's just go ahead and use the sky option. Then down here, you can pick which preset you want for this particular image for various use cases. You can have it create an automatic size, so it's just gonna kind of crop to fit a, an equal size around your screenshot. You can pick a four by three, which is closer to like an old school TV three by two, which is a little bit wider, 16 by nine, which is video essentially. So if you're gonna be using this, these screenshots on you for your YouTube videos, 16 by nine is probably what you're gonna go for. One to one, which is gonna be a square. Or you can even go through all of these other presets that they've created. So if you know you're gonna be posting this on Twitter, you they have all these different presets for a specific size that's gonna work best for that type of tweet. So if you know it's gonna be a single image tweet, you can just pick that and it's gonna be the perfect size. Same goes for Instagram. If you want this to be a story, it's gonna be vertical. If you want this to be a picture portrait, it's gonna be a little bit shorter, but still tall, rectangular. All those options are there and it's picked for you automatically. I do almost everything exclusively video, so I'm just gonna pick 16 by nine. So I've got this option to redact email addresses if it, there are email addresses and typically you don't wanna show those publicly. By default, it'll have this show watermark. You're probably not gonna want that, but you can also add your own watermark if you want to. So if you wanna say, you know, credit me, you can do that or credit to whoever. If you're gonna be screenshot shotting something that's editorial in nature or something of, of that variety. Then all you wanna do once you've finished formatting your screenshot is just click save and it's going to save it wherever it is that you specified it to be saved. So as you can see, I now have a beautiful image that I can share on social. I can now add this to my video. I can do anything I want with it. Okay, but I was really impressed by this particular feature that it did have built in, in terms of how it automatically centers images to make it even faster to use. So I'll just show you that real quick. We'll just go back up to take screenshot. Let's say I just wanna take a picture of my little profile right here. And let's say I just wasn't paying attention. I made this thing ridiculously too long. So that that's not gonna work at all. But this thing automatically detects the edges and crops it to fit accordingly thanks to this nice little balance button. If that's not checked, it'll pick, it'll follow whatever cropping method you used have that set by default, and then you'll be all set. The last thing I wanted to show you, particularly if you're gonna be using this in a manner that's repeated. So if you're a graphic designer and you wanna use this in maybe a brochure or something you're putting together or some print materials or a website, or even if, if you just use this all the time for social media, you can create a preset that will save all of the settings that you're using. So we'll click save. I'll say this is Thomas's preset and now I'm just gonna select this every single time that I use the every time I screenshot an image it's already gonna have the background image the size the aspect ratio all the things that I want to have selected and then of course I can have this default preset if I want to use theirs but obviously I'm probably gonna want to use mine but again all of this is set up to make it super simple and fast to create amazing really nice looking screenshots in just a matter of seconds. Now, if you want to, you can actually download, they've got like a free trial you can try out. They also have a license. So if you wanna purchase uh, their full license, you can do that. Uh, also, alternatively, you can get this through a service that I've mentioned in the past called SetApp. And to my knowledge, it actually just runs about $10 a month. You get access to this app as well as a whole suite of apps, many of which I've mentioned in other videos. I do have an affiliate link if you would like to get your first month of SetApp for free. So check out the link in the description if you'd like to check out SetApp. 
and as a result, get X Napper along with it. Okay, so that's it. Just a really quick tip and tool that I wanted to share with you today. As always, if you found this video useful, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.